Recording in progress. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore. My name is Dana Cole, and I will be your practitioner this morning for pre-service meditation. So if you could get settled where you are, and we'll just take a brief moment to know that God is all that there is. And right now, where you are, right where you are, God is where you are. So I'd like to take this opportunity now for you to take a deep breath and we'll have a brief guided meditation through gentleness. So as you contemplate, as you sit and contemplate, in the space that you are. Maybe it's quiet. Maybe you have noises going around you. Just rest and listen to the space that's around you. And I want you now to think of a baby, a newborn, wrapped and swaddled in a beautiful blanket, its newness, its softness, the baby you're holding in your arms, swaddled in a blanket. It's looking at you. You are looking at the baby. And so you take your hand and you reach to touch the baby's head. And you feel the warmth of the baby's head as you hold it and embrace it in your arms. That baby is the light of the world right now. It knows nothing but you, holding it, embracing it, keeping it safe and warm in your arms, in the blanket, with no need, with everything satisfied. And you're looking at this baby and the baby's looking up at you. And what are you feeling? What are you feeling in this present moment as you look at that baby? For no. For know, for you to know that that baby 
is you. That baby is you. And so all the love that you feel in your heart, all of the joy that you feel in your heart, all of the peace right now holding the baby, all of the contentment You know, as you recall, when you've had that feeling in your heart for that newborn in your arms, that gentleness, that loving kindness, you can have that for yourself. You can have that for everyone that you encounter. So that love, that feeling for the baby, just steepen it, steepen it for a minute. Feel it, feel that gentleness, that love, that delight for new life. For that new life is your life, every moment. So, briefly, we'll wrap this up with a brief benediction. We're thankful that we're here gathered together today in the glory of this brand new day. And I bless our proceedings today. And so it is. Spaces created school. Let me design an amazing.
Good morning, CSL Greater Baltimore. Well, let us open our um, Sunday celebration service by ringing the bowl, which will be followed by an invocation song by our beloved Jesse Powers and our invocation by um, Dana Cole, our practitioner of the day. Take it away, Jesse. Good morning, everyone. Let's take a deep breath. And as Jesse said, I know there's no need to worry. There's nothing to doubt. For right now, right now is all there is. And so I bring to you greetings from CSL Greater Baltimore and blessings from my heart to yours. 
for we know that today is a beautiful day that God and all our infinite intelligence that we have made. And so we're going to be glad, we're going to get up, we're going to rejoice in this beautiful day knowing that God is all there is, that we are one with this powerful, benevolent, gentle, magnificent, great spirit. And as we are united with this beautiful, great spirit, we uplift, we uplift Rev up. We uplift Jesse, we uplift Robin. We uplift everyone participating for this is our service this morning. So bless you, Ronald. Bless you, Josiah. Bless you, Alex. Bless you, Nancy, Marianne, Harry, for joining us this morning. And bless you all who are watching this on Facebook and who are watching this on YouTube, whenever and wherever you're watching us. We know that all is in divine order. All is blessed. And so it is. Uh, <laughs> you owe us a quarter, dear. You owe us a quarter in the unmute yourself on Zoom box. I could probably have paid my, my house off by all the quarters I owe. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesse and Dana. We're so glad to have you with us today. And I'll share a little bit more about Jesse yet later in our service. Again, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore's virtual service. Thank you, as Dana said, for joining us from wherever and whenever, where and whenever you are and when you watch this service. I am your host and the president of the Board of Trustees, Robin Farenholt. Our speaker and practitioner for oh no nope, our practitioner for today is the wonderful dana cole who is also producing this service our musician is jesse powers thank you again for your service and our speaker today is reverend james jeffley aka rev up at the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore, every Sunday is a Bring a Friend or Family Member Sunday. We invite you to bring a friend or a family member as we spread our CSL Greater Baltimore love, light, and joy. All are welcome here. We are radically inclusive, and we would love to have you hang out with us. Now, I invite you to read along with me as I read our sacred covenant and community prayer. First, our covenant. This is what we know. The circle of divine love is complete. It comprehends all, includes all, and binds all together with everlasting unity. We are forever held in love's presence and care. Divine love is complete as me. I am the divine love that I am. And our community prayer. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. And knowing that I am one with all its ex blessed expressions, which includes the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore community, I know that the highest purpose of CSL Greater Baltimore is a revelation of God as divine love. As I now accept the highest expression for the center of spiritual living Greater Baltimore into my life, I know that it is revealed in a way that glorifies God and serves the highest and greatest good for all who are touched by this presence. I am grateful. God is gracious. Amen. Ashe. And so it is. And now I would like to welcome back the wonderful Dana Cole for our reading and spiritual practice.
Good morning again, CSL Greater Baltimore. And the reading today comes from This Thing Called You by Ernest Holmes. I just love this book. It is so, one, it's filled with many spiritual mind treatments so that if you have anything that you're working on, you can pick up this book and it can help get you break that little log jam like a little beaver. So, I would like to share with you um, the reading. It's from page 58. And this is what I really love this. This is the secret of the answer to prayer. For no matter what particular religious conviction the one praying may have in the act of effective prayer, he opens his consciousness to a divine influx, that which is forever pressing against, against him flows through him, instructs the intellect, deepens the will, and executes its law through the person's act. Though divine intuition consciously enter the upper field of your mind where peace and joy exist, through divine intuition. Do this humbly, but with a sense of triumph. Meekly, but with a sense, but with a consciousness of worthiness. Not timidly, as knocking at a door which may refuse you, but boldly, as one who knows in whom you has believed, you have believed. You are working with an immutable power an unfailing principle, an everlasting power. It's as simple as this. The mind that is in you is the mind of God. It knows nothing about big. It knows nothing about little. But it does for you what it must do through you. Hence, you must believe that it will operate, that it must operate, it can operate on your behalf. So the spiritual principle, I've read, read this because this, the spiritual principle I want to emphasize is that conviction of feeling within. And so what I'm inviting you to do as you pray, as you do an affirmative prayer, as you do your spiritual mind treatment, when you're in that unification section where you're uniting with God and you're uniting with everything, I want you to, I want you to practice feeling it. I don't know how to describe it to you. I wish I could. I really do wish I could. And then when you get into, and when you get to your declaration, to your affirmation, I implore you to feel everything that you're saying, to feel it in your bones, in your heart. Leave your mind out of it for a minute. I want you to feel it in your body and feel it in your heart. So that's the spiritual practice that I'm inviting you to take up this week. When you're doing your spiritual mind treatment, put that heart in it and see what happens. I usually say wait three days, but you don't have to wait three days. Put that feeling in and see what happens. And so it is. Hmm. And Goodness. so it is. Yes, so it is. I just want to share a little bit about Jesse, who I call a walking ray of sunshine. <laughs> That's just my personal note. But <laughs> Jesse is a self described, I love this phrase, conscious indie pop songwriter and musician. The word conscious is the one that's unique here. There's lots of indie pop songwriters and musicians. Um, Jesse comes to us from Columbus, Ohio. She's been singing since she was speaking. 
And now she is going to grace us with one of her mu wonderful selections. Thank you so much for being here, Jesse. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Robin. I'm oh, happy gosh. to be here. <laughs> She's humble, too. <laughs> Very nice introduction. Thank you for calling me a walking ray of sunshine also. All right. This song is uh, it's about when your cup runneth over. How instead of trying to push it away because you're like, it's too much, spirit. It's too much, God. I can't handle it. You got to go get a bigger container. Here we go. Sometimes I get a glimpse of what happens in your head. And I got to say that it sounds so ridiculous. It makes me wonder if you understand how blessed I've been feeling being with you. You got this way, this way of carrying the light Just like a prism giving rainbows to people passing by Projecting technicolor dreams before my eyes You just radiated, ain't it beautiful? You got me so good that you could go and break my heart in two And I would probably smile in awe of all of the beautiful ways that you do you So baby, you better get used to it My love ain't going nowhere It starts as a spark, now my heart won't quit My love ain't going nowhere Your cup's too small and it all won't fit My love ain't going nowhere Better go to Home Depot, get a whole bucket Cause my love ain't going nowhere <laughs> I love to witness you in all your humanness Cause I get to see the things in me that you reflect I get to reel and get this feeling in my chest I'm in love, baby, with every little piece of you That's what Spirit says about you You got me so good that you could go and leave me in the dust And I'd be delighted to find there was more of you that I get to love so baby, you better get used to it Cause my love ain't going nowhere It starts as a spark, now my heart won't quit My love ain't going nowhere Your cup's too small and it all won't fit My love ain't going nowhere Better go to Home Depot, get a whole bucket Cause my love ain't going nowhere, baby So baby, stop playing like you ain't amazing, blazing with beauty and truth. Somebody heard me praying, craving, waiting years for a love like you. Baby, stop playing like you ain't amazing, blazing with beauty and truth. Somebody heard me praying, craving, waiting years for a love like you. Been waiting years for a love like you. Been waiting years for a love like you. Been waiting years for a love like you. I waited years for a love like you. And that's why I describe her as a walking ray of sunshine. Thank you so much, Jesse. You were you, you just bring up that well of joy in people, I believe. That's that's how I would describe it. Well, we have two people from one from Colombia and one from California with us today, and it's Rev Up and Jesse Power. So I said we were powering up today. But Reverend James Jeffley, a.k.a. Rev. Up, is an ordained minister, an award-winning international um, speaker, trainer, published author, and musician. His message in ministry is about empowered living through the elevation of our consciousness. That's something to really think about. His catchphrase, up yours. I had to say that, Rev. I had to say it is not an insult. It's an invitation to raise every part of our lives up to a higher level of happiness, peace, alignment, prosperity, and consciousness. I give you Reverend James Jeffley, AKA Rev Up. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you so much, Jesse, for the beautiful music. 
Yeah, you don't need a cup. You don't need a bucket. You are you are the whole thing. You're the whole enchilada, the whole ocean, right? You're all of that. Uh, can you see my screen? Can you hear me? We good? Greetings, CSL Greater Baltimore. Happy Sunday. Happy April. It is Arab American uh, Heritage Month, so uh, celebrating all of our, our neighbors and friends of, of that heritage. It's also Celebrate Diversity Month. And uh, so we get a chance to uh, celebrate the diversity of, of life itself. Life is diverse, right? You know, as, as, we, as we think about these different holidays that pop up, it, it seems like there's always two, three, four, five, ten different things we celebrate every month. We don't need an official holiday to celebrate things, to celebrate each other to celebrate that which is sacred to us. Every day can be a holy day if we so set the intention. So in addition to these official holy days, what else do you all want to celebrate today? If you would, take a moment, go within. If you're so inclined to unmute yourselves and speak into this sacred moment, the name of a person or a significant event, or a milestone in your life that you would like to celebrate today. So I'm going to count to three. If you want to unmute, you can. And then just speak it. We'll all be speaking at the same time. So one, two, three. Lottie I'm Mae's birthday. This, my grandmother. This day. Mother's, 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 mother's birthday. Today. Today. Oh, how nice. Sister's birthday last week. Sunshine, my, my birthday. birthday. It's all good. Charlotte's birthday, my birthday. 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 birthday today. Yes. Bless Thank Charlotte. All the Love her. Bless my life. Thank congratulations, you. Josiah. Oh, congratulations. Way to go. Berkeley College of Music hey, acceptance. Yay. Hey, hey, Up yours. Way to yeah, go. Yeah. So uh, a few weeks ago, I had the honor of, of being before you and speaking at a Sunday service where my message was, up until now, a recipe for transformation. Many of you were there. And I used the example of a cooking competition, the Next Level Chef, as a metaphor for traversing the different levels of consciousness according to David Hawkins' map in his book, Power Versus Force. And I, I talked about how uh, the recipe for transformation was to add some of the ingredients from the higher levels of consciousness to whatever you're cooking up <laughs> in life. Some ingredients like courage, neutrality, or willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, or peace. And today, I want to offer an additional ingredient. And that ingredient is the theme for CSLs for the month of April, gentleness, giant gentleness. And what they say in their uh, description of this theme for the month is that in those flashes when we are conscious of our oneness, there's an openness, an all-encompassing love. In all the other moments in our lives, we need and really deserve giant gentleness. So this month, we remember that gentleness is actually a powerful thing. And that giant gentleness opens us up to who we say we want to be. It lets all the moments of our lives be sacred and holy, even the sucky ones. And Ernest Holmes from The Science of Mind reminds us that Love points the way, and law makes the way possible. So when we learn to trust the universe, and to do so in a gentle way, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. So today I want to speak to you on the subject of Awaken the Sleeping Gentle Giant. Some of you may be familiar with this story. There was a fierce warrior who once approached a Zen monk and demanded to know the difference between heaven and hell. The monk looked up at the warrior and replied with disdain, Why would a rude and unrefined person like you want to know about such profound matters? You're not fit to understand these spiritual concepts. 
Well, the fierce warrior was angered by the insult, so he drew his sword and he was ready to strike the monk. And then the monk said, that is hell. Taken aback by the monk's courage and sudden illustration of his rage, the warrior lowered his sword. Filled with a sense of shame and newfound respect, the monk then said, and that is heaven. The warrior realized that hell was the suffering brought on by his own anger and hostility, his own ungentle ways. And heaven was what opened up through the monk's compassion and the warrior's own humility and understanding. The lesson is that heaven and hell are states of mind, states of consciousness. They are created by our own thoughts, our own actions, our own reactions, our own beliefs, what we think is true. In uh, the Christian Bible, there's a scripture that says, it shall be done unto you as you believe. And this is why I'm always teaching and preaching about consciousness. What is it you think? What is it you, you believe? What is it you hold dear? Because whatever that is, that guides your thoughts your actions that guides everything in your life all of the emotions psychological states views of life and god and processes below 200 on hawkins map of consciousness are akin to living in hell that hellish mindscape especially if you consistently find yourself living in states like anger and fear and grief or shame i'm not saying you're a bad person if you have moments of grief I'm not saying you're a bad person if you get angry. We're human beings. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And of course, as we interact with other people, the French writer Jean-Paul Sartre said, hell is other people. <laughs> I don't think he meant it exactly that way. But as we interact with other people, we are going to have these emotions. We are going to visit these lower levels of consciousness. The question is, where do we live? Do we get stuck there? How many of us have found ourselves in these lower levels of consciousness, these states of mental hell at some point in life? Yes? How many of us <clears throat> know someone who might be in one of these states right now? Some of you may ask, well, rev up! How do we get out of this hell? Well, I'll remind you of something that former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill once said, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> now, there's some debate about whether he actually said that, but it's still a motivating line, suggesting that when we are facing difficulties or hellish situations, the best course of action is to not stay there. It's to continue moving forward rather than stopping or dwelling in that difficult place. I know we all handle grief differently. We handle trauma differently. So here's the thing, folks. Don't try to go through this by yourself. Reach out. Ask for help. Call someone who remembers the truth, who can help you remember the truth. This is why we have practitioners. This is why we have spiritual practitioners. When you forget the truth, you call somebody up. You call Dana. You call, you call somebody from this community. You say, I've forgotten the truth. Momentarily help me. They will pray with you. They will treat with you to help rem you remember who you are. That you don't live in the small cup, as Jesse's saying about you. You got a bucket. All of the emotions, psychological states, views of life and God and processes above 200 on Hawkins' map are akin to living in heaven, a heavenly mindset, especially if you consistently find yourself in those states of joy and love and reason, acceptance and willingness, peace, neutrality. Those are the gentle states. In our political landscape, we often talk about the red states and the blue states and the purple states. I want to live in the gentle state. How many of us have found ourselves in these states of heaven at some point in life? 
who knows someone who might be in one of these heavenly states right now? If so, hang out with them. Find out what they're doing to get into and stay in these states. I know it can be hard to find these states, to live in these states, especially given all that's happening around us right now in the world. I, I want to read a poem by uh, a gentleman. His name was James Cavanaugh. And the first time I read this, I cried. It touched me. Uh, the poem is called, There Are Men Too Gentle to Live Among Wolves. This is his writing, so substitute men with women or whatever uh, other word is appropriate for you. He writes, There are men too gentle to live among wolves who prey upon them with IBM eyes and sell their hearts and guts for martinis at noon. There are men too gentle for a savage world who dreamed instead of snow and children and Halloween and wonder if the leaves will change their color soon. There are men too gentle to live among wolves who anoint them for burial with greedy claws and murder them for a merchant's profit and gain. There are men too gentle for a corporate world who dream instead of candied apples and ferris wheels and pause to hear the distant whistle of a train. There are men too gentle to live among wolves who devour them with eager appetite and search for other men to prey upon and suck their childhood dry. There are men too gentle for an accountant's world who dream instead of Easter eggs and fragrant grass and search for beauty in the mystery of the sky. There are men too gentle to live among wolves who toss them like a lost and wounded dove. Such gentle men are lonely in a merchant's world unless they have a gentle one to love. How do I find my gentleness? How do I access that? Love. Love is a path. And I realize it can be hard to find that love or path to create peace. And women too, yes. Yes, that, that was his writing, and so, as I said, use whichever gender uh, pronoun is appropriate for you, for all people. It can be hard to find or create peace and gentleness when the world is embroiled in harshness and war so often. Here's an interesting fact that stunned me when I heard it. Since the Declaration of Independence from Great Britain in 1776, the United States has been at war or involved in some armed conflict directly or indirectly for 231 of its 248 years. The U.S. has been at war for over 93% of our existence as a nation and before. Since 1962, the year of my birth, the U.S. has spent roughly 23 trillion, that's with a T, 23 trillion dollars on national defense. Yes, perhaps there were times when we needed to fight against fascism or tyranny or to end atrocities like slavery. But looking back at the tsunami of blood and tears we've shed in our history, I find myself standing with Bishop Desmond Tutu when he said, anything war can do, peace can do better. What could we have done with $22 trillion if we were focused on gentleness, if we had been focused on peace, if we had been focused on education and health care and making life better for everyone? But to realize this idea of peace first, we must first acknowledge our addiction to violence. I've been active in Toastmasters for a number of years, and I gave a speech four years ago for a Toastmasters club. Uh, the speech was titled, My Name is America and I'm an Addict. 
And I looked at not only our being in conflict for 93% of our nation's history, but our history of violence against women, indigenous people, immigrants, Africans stolen and forced to work as slaves, economic violence, violence against LGBTQ people, and violence that is manifested as discrimination, segregation, or indifferent exclusion. The speech was America admitting it has a problem, that it is addicted to violence. And I asked the audience to pretend that we were at a Violence Addicts Anonymous meeting, and this was our first step to seeking help. One of the great conflicts in our nation's history uh, happened on December 7, 1941. It was a day that will live in infamy, said Franklin D. Roosevelt, president of the U.S. at the time, to a joint session of Congress after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. The Japanese admiral who planned the attack on Pearl Harbor Isoroku Yamamoto reportedly wrote in his diary, I fear all we have done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill him with terrible resolve. Now whether or not the Admiral actually wrote those words is debatable. However, there is no doubt that the attack did awaken a sleeping giant. 16 million fighting Americans would go on to drive the Japanese and Germans into surrender fighting in every corner of the globe to deliver the, the world from tyranny. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to wake up. We can no longer remain asleep to the atrocities of violence that have become as commonplace in our society as the rising and setting of the sun. Just as Japan awakened a sleeping giant, we need to awaken that gentle giant within us that knows the ways of peace. It's amazing how this nation, this, this planet can come together in times of great strife and chaos. But what does it take to get us to do that? To put aside contention and competition and focus on cooperation and collaboration. It has taken a pandemic to get us to come together. It has taken world wars to get us to come together. In movies, it has taken alien invasions and giant monsters to get us to come together. Why do we seem to need catastrophe to bring us together? We don't need a catastrophe or calamity to bring us together. We just need the realization that there is a better way and the better way is peace. The better way is gentleness. I know it can be hard because when people are at war all around us, we feel like we have to match the energy of that. Well, if they're fighting, I have to fight. If they're being aggressive, I have to be aggressive. Given enough, enough time and persistence, water will wear down a mountain. Not by crashing into it with wave after waves, but persistent drops of rain over time. Gentle rain. It doesn't always take a hurricane. It doesn't always take a, a, a calamity. It doesn't always take force. There's a better way, a peaceful way. There's a better path, and the path is gentleness. When a baby cries, the storms of its emotions are quelled by the gentleness of its mother. And research shows that gentle parenting, which emphasizes understanding and empathy and respect, tends to lead to better emotional and social outcomes for children compared to strict or harsh parenting methods. Teachers in the classroom who employ a gentle approach using encouragement and supportive feedback rather than criticism and punishment often see higher levels of student engagement, better academic performance, and improved classroom behavior. Students feel more comfortable taking risks and expressing themselves, which is conducive to learning. 
In the workplace, leaders, managers who are gentle in their management style, prioritizing communication and understanding over authoritarian control, tend to have more motivated, productive, and loyal teams. If we take the path of nonviolence, if we learn nonviolent communication and have a gentler approach in conflict resolution and communication using mediation techniques, this can all lead to more sustainable and satisfactory solutions for everyone. But we have to focus on empathy and understanding rather than aggression and dominance. I must win. I must break you. It is possible to transform conflicts into opportunities for growth and relationship building. But this lesson isn't just about how we treat others. It's also about how we treat ourselves. Do I approach myself with gentleness, especially in times of stress or failure? If I do that, I can lead myself to better mental health outcomes compared to self-doubt and negative self-criticism. Oh, you're so stupid. You're so terrible. You're not smart. A gentle approach with myself can foster resilience, encourage personal growth, and prevent burnout. The most consistent voice you've ever heard is the one in your head. And it's the one that is always affirming something to you. But what are you affirming? Are you affirming the things from Jesse's songs? Are you affirming the things from Dana's readings? Are you affirming these principles that we talk about every Sunday, every Wednesday? There is one life. That life is my life. Are we affirming the gentleness and the goodness inside of us? Or are we affirming things that we hear from the outside, from those who may not be aware of or who have forgotten the truth of who we are, the nature of our existence. Lynn Grabhorn wrote a book called Excuse Me, Your Life is Waiting. And in it, she said something very, very profound. It's very simple. I think most profound things are. She said, you get what you focus on. You get what you focus on. If I am focused on making war, I don't approach you or anyone else, not even myself with a gentle spirit. If I focus on always compete, compete, win, 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 I don't focus on collaboration and connection. If I'm always focused on the pain, where is the joy? In the embrace of gentleness, we find our greatest strength. Bruce Lee, the great martial artist, once talked about taking the form of water, being like water. Water takes the form of whatever it's in. You put it in a cup, it becomes the cup. You put it in a bowl, it becomes the bowl, right? Water finds the path of least resistance. So what are you resisting in your life right now? Where is the resistance for you? Where are you at odds? With yourself? With your neighbor? With your family? With your friends? At, at the job? Where are you in resistance? And just consider for a moment, what if? What if you took the path of least resistance? What if you took the third way? Where Rumi talks about out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there's a field. I'll meet you there. What if we met there? What's possible? In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So it doesn't matter whether we're talking about Rumi or we're talking about Churchill or we're talking about the, the Bible or we're talking about Ernest Holmes. At a certain level of consciousness, they're all saying the same thing. Peace is the way. 
gentleness is the path. We can get to it from a lot of different places, but we're talking the same. We're, we're, we're singing the same song, folks. We're singing the same song. There was an ad in the 1970s. Some of us may be old enough to remember this. It was for a perfume called Nuance by Cody. And the ad said, If you want to get someone's attention, whisper. Any of you remember that ad? Any of you around at that time? Oh, I'm the only one. <laughs> no, I, I was here. I just don't remember that ad. Okay, yeah. I watch far too much television. <laughs> so think about this. Think about this. What? How is that spiritual? Everything is spiritual. What happens when we whisper to someone? They lean in. They want to hear. They focus their listening and their attention on your every word because you're about to say something special to them, something secret, something sacred. So what if we treated every conversation like that? What if we leaned in to gentleness? What if we leaned in to understanding? What if we leaned in to empathy? How do I access this gentleness? Lean in. When someone's speaking, don't listen to respond. Listen to comprehend. Let, let your words be measured. These things, these higher levels of consciousness, joy, peace, reason, love, acceptance, willingness, neutrality, they don't need to shout. They don't need to force themselves on anyone because they act as an invitation for people to join them because they're so compelling. All it takes is the courage to be quiet in the midst of the shouting. The courage to choose the third way, the way of peace. The courage to listen. The courage to not judge. That is the tipping point, is courage. Gentleness is the heart's courage to face the world's harshness with love and patience. So, Rev up. How do we begin to find the courage to awaken the gentle, this giant gentleness within us? Here's one thing I'd like you to think about this week. Each day, consciously choose one, one act of gentleness towards yourself or someone else. Whether it's offering a kind word to someone, some encouragement, whether it's holding a door open for someone, Maybe it's practicing self-forgiveness or responding with understanding or at least a question instead of anger. Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, seek first to understand. One thing, just one thing, one act of giant gentleness every day. Sometimes this process of transformation, of, of elevation of our consciousness, of upping ours, uh, it is, is not a Herculean act. We don't have to save the whales or cure cancer or, or right all the wrongs. We just have to bring one drop of kindness, one moment of peace, one act of gentleness. That's enough to get the ball rolling. This daily act of gentleness will not only soften the edges of our own inner critic and our fears, it will ripple out creating waves of compassion that can make our communities more resilient and connected and hopefully more peaceful. In the embrace of gentleness, we find our greatest strength. So when you leave here today, be gentle with yourself and others. Up yours.
How can I help you? That's my question. What can I do to help you? And in doing that, I can say to myself, I'm experiencing heaven on earth because I'm becoming aware of it. How many people are feeling spiritually fed by Brev Up's message? To be kind to yourself, to find peace within yourself, to find peace within the world. That's the kind of message that you can carry with you all week long. Open a door, make eye contact with someone, tell them good morning, simple acts of kindness, random simple acts of kindness. And here at the Center for Conscious Living Greater Baltimore, we practice conscious giving, also called dana. And in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism, dana is the practice of cultivating generosity. It can take the form of giving to those in need, giving to a community, or giving to where you're spiritually fed, it can take the form of giving to yourself, giving to yourself that inner peace, that forgiveness. So as we gather today in the spirit of love and fellowship, we are mindful of the, the profound impact of conscious giving, Donna. Because as we give, we receive. And there are a few ways to practice conscious giving and your support of the CSL Greater Baltimore community. And you'll find them on your screen. You will find there on the donate page on our website using PayPal, Giveify, text message. Um, we will also put our um, website link into the chat. So together with me, I asked you to um, declare our financial wealth and abundance. Together as a community, let us declare our financial wealth and abundance. I joyfully, consciously, and gratefully participate in the law of circulation. I trust in the spiritual principle that says, as I sow into my beloved community, I demonstrate my awareness of standing not only in the flow, but as the flow itself. As I sow of my time, my, myself, my time, my treasure, my talent, I demonstrate my support and engagement in my community's vision, mission, and purpose. I actively give as a demonstration of manifesting, of reaping the harvest of a world that works for all. Thank you all for your support. And now we will again be blessed with Little Miss Sunshine, Jesse Powers. <laughs> Wasn't that an indie film? <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine. Yes, I think it was. And it was awesome. And she wore she wore glasses like this. <laughs> Alrighty. Rev up. Up yours, man. That was so good. All right. Rev Up was talking about how we only come together during these times of stress and tragedy. And Eddie Watkins Jr., the great Eddie, says, let's come together in the name of love. So y'all know this song. Let's sing it together. Take a look at the person next to you. Say God loves you and I love you too. Feel the love in the sanctuary, the Zoom room. Raise your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love, we come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love. Now take a look at the person next to you. I say I recognize the God in you. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Raise your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We 
come together, we come together. In the name of love, we come together, we come together. That's all about it. I want everybody to turn on their camera so that they can look at the person next to them. And even though we're in this Zoom sanctuary, we know that we're together in the name of love. That is so cool, Jesse. What an appropriate song. I, I'm just so grateful. <sighs> what a powerful message. What powerful music. Mm. And we are a powerful community. And we have a lot of exciting things that are happening here at the C Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore. Of course, we every first and third Sunday, we meet in person at the um, Children's Course of Maryland. And it's 320 East Towson Town Boulevard at the terrace level. Easy to find. You'll see the sign outside. And we can actually physically hug each other if you so choose. Um, on Wednesdays, and I keep forgetting about this, and I do apologize to the presenters, but Wednesday evenings, we have the Wednesday Oasis, and that's from 6.30 to 7.30 on Zoom, on this same Zoom site. And we are um, very, very excited that we have, um, I think Dr. Harry Leftman's going to lead us in meditation this week, which we can all use in the middle of the week to pick us up and move us forward into a peaceful interaction with the next person we encounter. We have made blessing bags. They will be at service next week. Um, they are filled with things that people who might be experiencing homeless would be fine useful. And so I'd love to keep them in your car. If you know of an encampment where there might be people who are experiencing homelessness, we can also take some there. But I'd love being able to be on the corner, see someone who is who is asking for help and be able to hand them something tangible. Something tangible that you know will be to their benefit. So the blessing bags will be available next week. And this is the rockin' party that's coming up. You, I want you to join us for the Peace and Wellness Festival 2024. And it's on October 5th. And at the Rusco Mansion in Baltimore, please put this on your calendar. It's a, going to be an incredible event and you will just feel the love and the peace at this event and the emphasis on being spiritually and, men, and physically well. Um, it's going to be quite the day. Um, in case you didn't notice, prayer works. Prayer works if you work it. So you want to treat and move your feet, knowing the truth for everyone around the planet. That one interaction with the person next to you, where you say, I see you, I value you, you're loved. That is, that's the prayer that can work, that can bring forward peace. If you have a prayer request, you can send it via email to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org. Um, you can contact one of our practitioners 
Um, there, if you'd like to pray today on Zoom, uh, Dana will be available. Just type prayer in the chat. I don't know about you, but I feel spiritually fed today. I have been consciously and intellectually and uh, spiritually moved. So I thank you very much, Rev Up. I thank you, Jesse. I thank you, Dana. This has been a very, very powerful service. So go forward. Have a wonderful week. Know that you are loved. And now we will have our closing prayer. Take a deep breath with me, please. There is one infinite source, one universal spirit, one giant gentleness that permeates every aspect of the universe. And this divine presence is the essence of all love, peace, and all harmony. And I, James Jeffley, AKA Reverend Up, as I speak my word, I am knowing that I am one with this infinite spirit that my life is a direct expression of divine love and harmony. As I acknowledge this unity, I recognize that the same loving presence resides in all beings, connecting us all in a sacred dance of life. I affirm that gentleness is the true strength that flows through me. I embrace the gentle power of my spirit, which guides me to interact with myself and others to come together in compassion and understanding. In every situation, I choose to respond with gentleness, allowing it to lead my thoughts and my words and my actions. And as I embody this gentleness, I see it reflected back to me in all my interactions. Conflicts are resolved with ease. Relationships flourish under the nurturing light of compassionate care. And I trust in the gentle flow of life, which guides me towards actions and decisions that honor my soul and the souls of others. And so I'm giving thanks. I'm deeply thankful for the gentleness that enriches my life, bringing peace and joy to every moment. I'm thankful for the guidance of the universal spirit whose gentle hands lead me back to love and harmony whenever I stray. So I release my word into the law, knowing that it is done. The power of gentleness activates changes in my life and in my interactions. Peace and compassion prevail, and it is done. Anchor this with me by saying, and so it is.